Good morning, and Good morning. welcome to St. George's Lowville, whether you are here in person or whether you're joining us, joining us from home. We invite you to join in the prayers and the hymns. We begin with the territorial acknowledgement. St. George's Church and most of the homes of our parishioners lie on indigenous lands that the homes of the Ashinaabe, Attawandan, and Métis people since long ago, and we offer thanks and respect for their care of the land as well as the plants and the animals down the ages. We pray that we, in turn, may treat the land and its indigenous peoples with respect and friendship. And now we begin our worship in the name of the Holy One, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, we are made one. God, God for us, we call you Father. God alongside us, we call you Jesus. God within us, we call you Holy Spirit. You are the eternal mystery that enables and holds and enlivens all things. Even us, yes. and even me. Every name falls short of your goodness and your greatness. We can only see who you are in what is. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates, in front of the town. 
At the entrance of the portal, she cries out, To you all people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made, yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters might not be transgressed his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks, thanks be to God. God. A Psalm of David. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, their children that you should seek them out? You have made them but little lower than the angels. You adorn them with glory and honor. You give them mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and all that walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. For He will not speak on His own, but will speak whatever He hears. And He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because He will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that He will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable to you, O Lord. Please be seated. Well, every day on this day of the church year, we try and get our heads around the idea of the Trinity. As our opening hymn has it, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. It's a really difficult concept, and the church really didn't get its collective head around the issue until the fourth century. And the basic problem was and is this. Christianity emerged from Judaism, which is strictly monotheistic, that's to say one God. My guess is that the earliest Christians, including the Gospel writers Matthew, Mark and Luke, all saw Jesus as the Jewish Messiah, someone who had been appointed by God to come and bring in God's kingdom in, on earth. However, John's Gospel gave us a very different message because we learn right at the beginning that Jesus and the Father are one. Indivisible since the beginning of time, and then later, John has Jesus say that he will return to the Father, who will send an advocate in his place. That's what we read last Sunday. It implies that there are three divine figures, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Talk about controversial. The matter became really vexed in the early 4th century when a theologian from Alexandria, whose name was Arius, claimed that Jesus was actually God's firstborn creation, not one and indivisible. So, was it God's first creation, or was God actually part of Jesus and Jesus part of God? It seems like splitting hairs. However, it was a very big deal in that time, and church leaders debated the issue in Nicaea, a city which is in southern Turkey. They took the opening verses of John's Gospel as their guiding authority. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And they incorporated this idea into what we call the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed then set out, correct, that's orthodox, church doctrine. Father, Son and Holy Spirit became the three persons of a single divine entity which we call the Trinity. Church leaders declared that Arius and his supporters were heretics and excommunicated them. They threw them out of the church. Then reciting the Nicene Creed became mandatory. It made sure that everyone followed the official line. But you know, that leaves several problems. Who can really say they understand the Nicene Creed? I certainly can't. Maybe some of you can, but I can't. Moreover, the Nicene Creed was an affirmation of faith that was written and was appropriate to the 4th century. Not today. We 21st century people have to brush aside a lot of ideas that Jesus descended from heaven, for example. That implies, of course, that heaven is a location that's above the stars somewhere. We now know that that's not the case. And the idea of the resurrection of the body. St. Paul was quite clear that resurrection does not mean our present physical state. He talked about a grain of wheat when it dies comes up as a real plant. 
If it did, would we be resurrected as youthful or as adults? Would, what about cremations, when there's no longer a body? Or after the physical body has decayed away? And would we spend eternity in heaven clothed or stark naked? These are really problems for us, I think, if we start to take the creed literally. To say the least, bodily resurrection is problematic. Don't get me wrong, I like the idea of the Trinity, just, just not reciting the Nicene Creed. I imagine, as I said to the children, the three persons of the Trinity like three windows onto the divine, but God in, inside is unknowable. Sometimes I look through the God creator window, other times I need the comfort of the Jesus window, and yet other times I need the inspiration of the Holy Spirit window. It works for me. But I really want to talk today about today's psalm. Psalm 8 is one of my favourites, for a very simple reason, that in the psalm, the psalmist says that we, God made us just a little lower than the angels. That's an amazing thought, that we're just a little lower than the angels. It means there's a spark of the divine in every one of us. But the psalm also has a problem, because we're told that God gave us <coughs> dominion over everything. He put everything in subjection under our feet. The same as the writers of Genesis. They imagined God telling the ancient Israelites to be fruitful and multiply have dominion over all God's creatures. To these authors, long ago, the resources of our planet seemed fine, infinite. They seemed absolutely lim limitless. But it's different today. Now we recognise that we're destroying the resources of our planet. We now risk that we risk destroying the whole fabric of the planet that we call our island home. That really isn't very angelic behaviour. So then what does Psalm 8 mean to us today? We realise that it's our task to reinterpret the scriptures in every generation. We are still, I believe, only a little lower than the angels, but our imperative is no longer dominion, domination, subjection. Instead, today's scientific understanding of ecology requires us to be stewards of creation, not to tame it, not to be fruitful and multiply so as to fill it. Instead, we must be agents for the Creator who gave us this place, this planet on which we live. And on behalf of everyone who will follow us and the rest of the created order, it's a new time with new responsibilities. We're still only a little lower than the angels, but we must now reinterpret our psalm to care for all of creation. 14th century mystic Julian of Norwich wrote this, The Spirit of God dwells within us because we're not created by God, but rather of God. In the context of Psalm 8, it's the idea of <coughs> unity with creation, not dominion over creation. I want to finish our lighter note. Many years ago I attended a conference in St John's, Newfoundland. I brought home Michelle a CD of Newfoundland folk songs. One was a song about a wonderful Trinity cake. Unfortunately, Mr. Google has failed me. Mr. Google doesn't seem to know anything about the Trinity cake. I've looked, and I've never found a recipe for it. Whoever find one, let me know. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together. We believe in God the Creator, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now our confession. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes us to communion even when we go astray. Therefore, let us confess our sins, confident that God will forgive us. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, <coughs> pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Please be seated. The response for our prayers this Trinity Sunday is, Blessed Trinity, hear our prayer. And so let us pray. On this Trinity Sunday, we've come before you, holy three in one, to offer our praise and adoration. You are God the Creator, giving us richly all things to enjoy. You are Christ the Saviour, Saviour of the world, made flesh to set us free. You are the spirit of truth and love, willing to dwell in us. You are holy and blessed, one God, eternal Trinity. Be near to us, the people formed in your image, and be close to the world you love to bring to life. Blessed Trinity, hear our prayer. Holy three in one, you invite us to dance with you in the eternal circle dance of life. We give thanks for the company of those who join us in the circle of life, those known to us and unknown, those seen by us and unseen in the heavenly host. We give thanks for our friends and family, for our Church of St. George's and its people, and gladly we acknowledge the love and the gifts that you have given us through them. Open wide our hearts, that we too may share your love with friend and stranger. Blessed Trinity, hear our prayer. Father and Mother God, creator of all, we thank you for your creation. You have provided us humans and all living creatures with everything we need for life and health. Grant the resources of the earth may neither be hoarded by the selfish nor squandered by the foolish, but that all creation may share equally in your gifts. Jesus, Saviour, when you were here on earth, you healed the sick and loved the broken. And we remember this morning those who are sick, sad or lonely, those whose life is saddened by the death of a loved one and those for whom life seems to have lost meaning. We pray that they may be aware of your comforting presence and know that in your hands they are safe and loved. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, our guide, our advocate and teacher, we remember all who bear the responsibility of leadership, for heads of state, ambassadors, and political advisors. We ask you to give them a vision of justice and reconciliation. We pray for peace in the world and ask you to create in each one of us a love for peace, not a peace that is absent from struggle, but that peace which passes all understanding and that makes whole what is now broken. We remember those who struggle against injustice and violence, those for whom war and famine have robbed of their homes, families and friends. We pray that you fill them with your strength and wisdom and surround them with your love, compassion and companionship. Blessed Trinity, hear our prayer. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen. Now we close our prayers by saying the prayer that Jesus taught to us, his followers. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, this Trinity Sunday and always. Amen. Lord, speak to me. Trinity Sunday and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.